she's actually working this time. These are the 14 that I read this month, but a couple of them, this stack specifically, I'm still reading. So I'm not going to talk about those or rate those in this video, but they will more than likely show up. Well, I'm sure, I'm. there's no way I'm not gonna finish them. Those will be in next month's wrap up. I also got new mics and you can tell because I didn't plug it in. Here are all of the books I forgot this was on. Cassie was like, that doesn't sound like the mic is plugged in. I was like, yep, completely didn't even realize that I needed to plug it in. I thought it was Bluetooth, so. Cheers to learning new things. I'm also epically harsh in this video. I am definitely an Enneagram One perfectionist, a critical person just by nature, but also a half, a glass half full person. So I'm positive in my critical perfectionism because at the end of the video, I just literally get done roasting almost all of the books. I was shocked at my own behavior. However, at the end of the video, I literally say, this was a great reading month. <laughs> like it was good and it literally wasn't. It was probably the worst reading month I have had in all of 2024. It definitely is. It has the most DNFs, the most three star and below over the course of the past six months. We're in month seven. Hopefully the trend will be no longer. This next month, I'm going to go into it and be a little bit more picky with my books. But I'm also proud of myself for DNFing things because I have in the past been terrible about doing it. My perfectionism again has come in and bit me over the head, bit me over the head bit me in the butt and hit me over the head because I will start a book and I'm like, I have to finish it. Like I don't start things and not finish them. I just make it literally, I give it a moral weight to it and that's just so stupid. And so I've broken myself of that. I'm just a mood reader currently. Anyways, enjoy my July wrap up. This is the most DNFs in a row that I have ever had in my life. So if you wanna know what not to read, I need some major help. Do I wear it right here or do I just hold it like a microphone? Maybe I'll just hold it. I have nothing to hold anyways. All my books were ebooks this month. Here are all of the books I forgot this was on. Here are all the books I loved and hated in July. July started with a bang. I was pretty happy with this book. I am a pretty harsh reader. I'm gonna preface this entire video by saying that because I rarely, and I mean rarely, people say that they rarely give five stars. I rarely give five stars. If you are going up against The Hunger Games, C.S. Lewis, Girl in Pieces, your book's not gonna be five stars. Nothing for you. Five stars is the top. Five stars is five stars. Everything else is below that. So if I DNF something that's zero stars, I didn't rate it. If I finished it but regret wasting time on it, that's a one star. A two star is like, I'm okay that I wasted my time on it, but like I'm not happy with how it went. A three stars is, I'm happy I read it. It was a fun time, but I'm probably not really recommending it to anyone unless it's like a super specific trope that I know those people like. A four stars is, I'm super happy I read it. I might reread it. I would absolutely recommend it to most people. A five stars is like, I can't stop thinking about it. It has permanently changed me. It is one of those books that just follows you around no matter where you go, what you're doing, you're thinking about those characters, you feel like they're real life people, or it's like, um, it feels more like a memory than it does a book you read. That is a five stars for me. Or if it's a nonfiction, which I do rate nonfiction, if it's nonfiction, then a five stars would be, yeah, a paradigm shift happened, it. A paradigm shift happened during reading it, or it has just left such a mark on me and like changed my personality in a way. Blew my mind about something, I can't see the world the same way. There's a before and there's an after, Bethany, with reading those types of books. Five stars have to mark before and after. Anything else is four below. And may the odds be ever in your favor. That being said, let's get started. <laughs> the story life of AJ Fickery gave it a 3.5 stars. So the main character, AJ Fickery, is super unlikable, but not in a terrible way. There are some unlikable main characters that I'm like, you're which I will be getting to, yellow face, I'm looking at you. <gasps> that one is a really unbearable, unlikable main character. AJ Fickery is like almost just depressed and 
in a really bad time of his life. So AJ Fickery lives on Alice Island. So it's got all those like small town seaside vibes that I just love, which definitely helped make the book better. It's also a really short book. I don't know how many pages it was, but it felt really, really fast. It's the same author as Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow, which maybe I would give four stars. I don't know. It could be like a 3.75, but I like Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow better. And that is one that I think about semi-frequently, not a ton, but like that world that she painted for us was really good. Those relationships I loved. Anyways, the storied life of AJ Fickery, also very academic feeling because he owns a bookstore. It's not like dark academia vibes whatsoever, but I think because it is a small seaside town, you do have a little bit of those like foggy feelings and then he owns a bookstore so you've got that like academia piece in there his most prized possession is like this really old original manuscript or original edition of one of i think it's edgar Allan poe's books it's worth like thousands and thousands of dollars and so he's like banking on this being his retirement basically well it goes missing and that is like a whole saga in and of itself there are really lovable side characters as well. So yeah, that was just a fun one, but it has a lot of like mystery and intrigue and I really like the author's writing style, obviously. Then I read The Maidens, which I DNF'd. Audrey loved it. He, I don't know what she rated it, probably like a four stars, but she loved it. I just could not get into the characters, which is written a little bit like uh, tomorrow and tomorrow tomorrow and the storied life of AJ Fickery. Are you tired of me saying that yet? It has this like cold detached feeling that if you've read those books, you know what I'm talking about. There aren't as many likable side characters. She, so it starts out with, what's her name? I don't even know. Mariana. But if you like the dark academia vibe and you don't need like a really good story with lovable characters and a lot of emotion, then you will like this book. If you like peeling pieces of skin the size of quarters off your hands, bars is for you. If you want a lot of emotion and to enjoy the characters and see yourself in them, it's a mystery, but like not, for me, it was not a satisfying mystery whatsoever. I DNF'd it at like 80%. It was, I was almost done with it and I literally didn't care to figure out what ended up happening because there's this girl who goes missing. Well, she doesn't go missing. She literally gets murdered. So she's dead. She is in this group called the Maidens. I think that their group is called Maidens. Can you tell how little I cared about the details of this book? It's sort of set at Cambridge because the main character, she is a group therapist and it kind of gives you like her internal dialogue and like distress and paranoia a little bit or like she's had a lot of deaths in her family her husband died and i think her sister and brother-in-law also died because her niece she like kind of raised if i'm remembering correctly and now her niece is going to cambridge which she also went to cambridge so she goes to visit her niece and then ends up kind of getting swept up into this mystery of this girl that gets murdered that's in the maidens group which is kind of like this not secret society but a little bit and you have to be like invited in they hang out with this professor that is very charismatic and beloved by other students but mariana is really suspicious of him and there's like kind of stuff that starts coming out about him so if you're gonna read this skip ahead but if you're not it like paints it to be him the whole time i still don't know what happens i didn't even care to like flip to the end to figure out if it was the professor or not or like what went on anyways it's kind of fun like it paints a little bit of a world for you but not enough to like not enough for me to finish it that was a hard dnf then there's to kill a mockingbird which i love this book i love this book the characters are so lovable and enjoyable the moral questions and just the story that you get to follow is so good it is so such a classic story i have read it three times this was my third time and with every read it gets better and better i think just because as i get older i like understand the depth the complexities the emotion even more but atticus finch is the dad just a great like you don't recognize when you're a kid in reading this because i first read it in high school how incredible and just like genuine and loving and a force for the time i'll wait for we are indeed. 
because it is in the south and it deals with race it deals with class it deals with just like the human condition and how we're all awful but also lovable the good the bad if you haven't read it just go read it it's so good you can even listen to it uh one of those read throughs what i listened to and you don't lose the story too much i feel like all of that to say it's a 4.5 so then i had another dnf yellow face which i finished at 60 percent this was one that from the very beginning i wasn't very into i like kind of knew i guess well i'd seen the cover everywhere and so i thought it was going to be a fun light read when i'm going to bed i like to have something on my kindle because i don't want to fall asleep reading a big hardback but this one was a brutal to get through and i only made it to 60 percent and i honestly shouldn't have even gone that far very unlikable main character she's like aware of how awful she is and i feel like it's a, it's wanting to cover issues of culture, race, class, friendship, just lots of moral questions, but in I feel like a joke of a way, it was like not deep at all and I loved how it kind of like poked fun at society and pop culture and just like how ridiculous people can get with their sides of arguments, but I just wasn't a fan. It felt very one note. Then I read a nonfiction book called Full Surrender. Oh my gosh, this one is a great one. If you are kind of further along, I guess, in your spiritual religious journey and you don't mind reading a little bit of like an older take on Christianity, such a good read. It's a lot about um, just like surrendering your life and the different types of sin. I don't know, this one is a hard one to explain. The back of the book says, this is individual revival multiplied in faith, and there develops congregational revival, community revival, national revival, and worldwide revival as Christians with resultant soul-winning and missionary endeavor. There is a price to pay, but the reward is far greater. Anyways, I gave it four stars. It was really good. Definitely not like a mind-blowing paradigm shift whatsoever, but I highly suggest if you are, it's like definitely not like beginner Christianity, but it's also not like super complex and it's written in like a fairly digestible way. I think it was written in maybe like the 50s or 60s. Has fun concepts to think about and I have never read a book solely on repentance. I just haven't like studied that subject a ton other than obviously just like reading the Bible. Then I read Finley Donovan is Killing It, which I gave it two stars, which sounds brutal. I'm like reading that and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gave it two stars. I don't do 0.5s often. And that was a book that I don't like hate that I spent time on it, but I definitely am not reading any of the other Finley Donovan books. Maybe part of the two stars is because I was going into it thinking it was gonna be a fun one because I've heard so much about it and everyone loves it. Like four and five stars all around. So I was going into it thinking it was gonna be a fun time and it wasn't. Someone said, if you loved Junie B. Jones as a kid, you will love Finley Donovan. Junie B. Jones, biggest fan. I see where people maybe-ish could get there, but like, no. Ew, get off of me. Ugh, as if. So I love the cover. I think it's such a fun concept. And like I said, definitely good enough for me to finish but it seemed like a cool concept. It's this author who is misheard while she's talking about like a murder that she's like thinking about writing about in her book. She has a disguise on because she's like looking like crap that day and is a mom and someone overhears her and thinks she is literally planning a murder and then kind of like gets her tangled up into these other things. Not my thing. Another DNF, The Searcher, which I'm so sad. I have seen so many Tana French novels lying around i love the covers it like really called to me was expecting it to be amazing loved the first few chapters of the searcher and i've never read tana, tana french before i've been dying to read her and then i got to like page 106 or something and other than the first chapter maybe chapter and a half it was all just him and his irish buddies so he's an american ex-cop that got divorced and is retired now living in a small town in Ireland, which really cool setting, really cool idea. I love a good like ex-cop retire story. Maybe if I gave it another couple hundred pages, another hundred pages, I would get into it more, but the, um, it just went, to, it was way too slow of a burn for me. And I'm definitely probably just like, I am impatient and I'm sure the book is incredible overall, but there's just too many good books out there. I don't wanna waste my time, you know? I think I have like, 
I'm probably overcorrecting now though, because used to, I would never DNF. I would just like read. If I started it, I'm reading the entire thing. I would never DNF anything. And it would put me into book slumps like for months at a time. So now I'm on the other end of the spectrum and DNFing like anything. If I even remotely, I'm like, I don't want to pick that up right now. Like this is not fun. I'm just like hard DNFing it. I think I have one soft DNF that I like might circle back to if I'm in the mood. Okay, two left, another DNF. But this one's a soft DNF. This one is The Maid, which I've, I love the concept of. It's like this quirky girl who doesn't have really good social skills. It's funny, it's endearing. It's also like gets you kind of curious about what is happening in her world. Like what is accurate and not accurate because she does obviously see things and feel things in a different way than most people. She has this like childlikeness to her, but also this very wise, mature being because she was primarily raised by her grandma. Her grandma um, passes away and then it's her like navigating the world without guidance. She is a maid in a hotel, which is a cool, like fun environment to picture while you're reading it. <laughs> her boyfriend or love interest it also there's like crying that happens with that i don't know it just wasn't that good i feel like it's supposed to be a full-on mystery and i'm just not that curious i dnf'd it at 30 percent but like maybe it's a soft dnf i don't know we'll see and then i read the god who is there which is another non-fiction and this one i liked even more than full surrender it discusses art and culture and how that influences society in such huge ways, which I'm just a big fan of that topic. The influence of art on culture and society and religion and religion influencing art. I love um, toying with that idea and thinking about it. And I obviously think stories change the world. So just a big fan of that idea and then how the author took it and analyzed historical and modern Christianity. I just thought was a really cool idea and I learned a decent amount from it. It's one that you have to sit and chew for a while. So it took me like almost a full month to get through because I only read a couple of pages at a time, but it was enjoyable, loved every page. What did I give it? A four stars. I feel like that might be like a 4.25. It was like really enjoyable and I saved the best for last. These Silent Woods. I love this book. I read it so fast was immediately in love with the main characters. It's about a father and daughter, and her. the daughter reminds me of Scout in To Kill a Mockingbird. Why does he bring you all this stuff? So that was kind of timely that I read those sort of back to back. It's the father-daughter journey. They both live in the woods, somewhere in Appalachia, like out in the middle of nowhere in a cabin. That was his friends that he's like kind of just staying at for a while. Nobody knows other than that one friend that they live there. And then they have this weird neighbor that's like, he lives freaking far away, kind of like spying on them the whole time. I don't want to like screw anything up for you. I don't want to spoil anything. Basically they live out in the middle of nowhere for reasons that the dad does not want to fully discuss with the daughter yet, but is going to eventually, you immediately know that it's like something bad. Some crime was committed by the father for them to have to be in isolation and live out in the middle of nowhere purely for the fact that no one can know that they are alive or where they live. So slowly throughout the book, you start getting more and more pieces of that, like what happened and why they're hiding and why they cannot be seen. I think I literally end the vlog because I talk about this more in depth. Uh, that's why I'm not going to go really into it in this video because I did a full reading vlog on it. That video isn't up yet, but it's coming out in a couple of weeks. So be looking for that. So good. So I'm not going to tell you why I'm reading it because that will be in that video. But it was a hard one and it was so good. And you get my like real time reactions, me reading it, me finding things out. I may or may not have rated it five stars. You'll have to wait and see. That is my July wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm out of breath. I'm sweating. That was great. It was a great month. My birthday month, DNF'd a lot. So it like should have been a bad month, but I had two really good nonfiction and two really good fiction. So I call that a win with how picky I've been recently. And those DNFs, I feel like I DNF fast enough that I was fine. It wasn't, and there was no regret. That's my credo, no regrets. Mm -hmm. You have no regrets? Dad? No, nope. like not even a single letter. No, no. way, <laughs> not me. I definitely warned you, so don't say I didn't warn ya. I told you it was gonna be pretty bad. But next month will be better and it'll just make it seem like next month is an incredible reading month. I 
already off to a great freaking start. This is um, a little sneak peek of my August TBR. Let me just tell you, I've got some great, great choices in here. I also wanted to mention, I was like, why did I not mention this? Because I think this will be fun to kind of carry through all of my wrap ups slash TBRs. I read several books of the Bible last month. So I, there's not a huge rhyme or reason to the books that I read like what book of the Bible I pick. I'm not going in any specific order. So my family does a Bible study together. So we started James this month and it's freaking short. So we're literally, we have one chapter left. So we read James one through four. We normally just like discuss it. We hang out on Saturdays and we'll read however much we get done and discuss for a couple hours while my foster siblings are napping. And then in my personal Bible study, I was in, I think just, revelation for probably all of this month. Well, I flipped back and forth. So during our Bible studies, we don't do text commentary. Like we don't read any other books or text commentary or anything like that. So in my personal Bible study, sometimes I will like pause my normal, like what I'm reading at the moment and either read text commentary from the book that we're studying in the Bible study, which I did do several times. Um, James is so good. It is so applicable. It's in the New Testament, so it's really easy to digest and it's more like lesson based than most of the Old Testament is a lot more stories and obviously you're getting a ton of moral um, lessons within that. But if you've never read the Bible before, I suggest starting in the New Testament because it's just reads more like self helpy and is easier I think. No less savage, might I add, though, because I was studying Revelation in my personal Bible study this month, and oh my gosh, if you are in the um, mystery, thriller, horror mood, check out Revelation. It is wild. It's the first time I'm reading it, I say as an adult, I've definitely read it as an adult. I am 28. You will have know that from my um, last video but I'm sure I read it in my early 20s because I read the Bible in a year when I was like 22, 23-ish, but it did not hit me like, well, I was also reading the Bible in a year. So I've, I kind of go through different seasons of reading the Bible and in that period, yeah, I was just reading the Bible straight up, no text commentary, just taking my time, digesting it, praying over it. Now I'm really heavy into text commentary and just reading books, theological and spiritual text on different books of the Bible. So I've picked up a couple on Revelation. I haven't gotten into the books yet because I'm still reading David Guzik and Charles Spurgeon are my favorite uh, people to read their text commentary on. I feel like they're, I don't know, I just really like the way that they view things. So anyways, I thought I would also mention that because I'm always curious like how people do their personal Bible study and that's my favorite thing to read, to be honest. Just the most wild mystery you will ever read in your life. Okay, love you, bye.